So what's the difference between being on dialysis and end-stage renal disease? Nothing. If you have end-stage renal disease, the end of the stage is dialysis. Dialysis, man, invented in 1943 under Nazi occupation in Holland. The first dialysis machine, Willem Kolf, K-O-L-F. Willem Kolf was hiding 600 people in the basement while he invented dialysis out of vacuum cleaners, sausage casings, and orange juice cans, under occupation, and he's also dyslexic. So I like to think about that every time everybody goes, I've got attention deficit disorder. I love attention deficit disorder. It makes you do things really quickly. So at what point we initiate dialysis, <laughs> and every once in a while somebody tries to rename it, renal replacement therapy. Hmm, nice idea. Dialysis is, it's not any particular BUN and creatinine. You see, it's not a particular BUN and creatinine that makes you do dialysis. It's the symptoms that go along with it. For instance, it's not so much the BUN and the creatinine, it's are you going to die? What kills you? What makes you, kills you with renal failure? Acidosis, because your body makes one milliequivalent, you make one milliequivalent per kilogram per day or organic acid as a waste product. Even the most recycling society has waste products and you have to be able to excrete that, mostly through the distal tubule. And if your kidneys are dead, you can't excrete it. And dialysis is really the only long-term way. You can say, well, why not just give bicarbonate to people? It won't work. It won't work ultimately. Now, you don't have to dialyze for anemia because anemia, you can give erythropoietin. And the anemia of end-stage renal disease with the inability to make erythropoietin, because it's hard sometimes for people to remember that the kidney is an endocrine organ. It's an endocrine organ. And uh, by the way, as an endocrine organ, it's also associated with erectile dysfunction and amenorrhea because very often you have people have high prolactin and it actually shuts off your periods and shuts off your erection because let's put it this way, if you were so sick and your kidneys were so dead, wouldn't it be in the body's best interest to make sure that you're not reproducing at that time? That's why it shuts you off. It shuts you off because the same way that people who are starving to death should shut off their periods. It's nature's way of saying, yoy, Oye, chico, tranquilo, hombre, ay, suave, papito. Now is not the right time to be having babies. So one of this is a very high-functioning question. Most people don't realize that there's an endocrinopathy that goes along with end-stage renal disease that causes these sexual disorders. But it fits chronic illness, chronic illness, severe illness. So you don't have to dialyze for anemia. You just give erythropoietin. You do have to dialyze for the encephalopathy, the brain disorder, because uremic encephalopathy has absolutely no treatment. There's no lactulose and rifaximin for uremic encephalopathy. There's dialysis. Now, which has greater efficacy, hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis? It's about the same. It's the same. Uh, the Europeans, the British, the Europeans use peritoneal dialysis more. Americans use hemodialysis. But it's just a matter of preference, local tribal customs. Uh, they both have the same efficacy. Peritoneal dialysis has more peritoneal infections. Hemodialysis has more blood infections. So they both have problems. Vascular access is very difficult. Hemodialysis can be done by the patient at home. That's one of the things about it. You might choose to do peritoneal because it means you could just dwell around and do it at home while you're watching TV. You don't have to go to a dialysis center. Keep it clean. Now, people with end-stage renal disease have an increase in phosphate because the kidneys excrete phosphate. And if the kidney is dead, the phosphate won't go out. And since the kidneys also make vitamin D2, you have a low calcium, and that low calcium, when the kidney can't make vitamin D, makes a low calcium, and the low calcium raises the parathyroid hormone, which melts your bones and brings out the phosphate. 
You don't have to dialyze for people just because they have a high phosphate because you can just treat the phosphate with calcium carbonate and calcium containing phosphate binders with lanthanum, which is a rare earth or savellamer, a rare earth that basically, that's the name of the stuff. Go to the periodic tables of uh, elements there, Metchnikoff, and you'll find lanthanum savellamer. They bind phosphate in the gut. They bind phosphate in the gut. Give calcium, give vitamin D. Bind it with calcium calcitate, calcium acetate, calcium carbonate. No aluminum, aluminum causes dementia, aluminum's out. But you don't have to dialyze for high phosphate. You do have to dialyze if you get uremic pericarditis because absolutely no substitute for dialysis to clear out those nitrogenous wastes that make your pericardium upset with you. Now, you could of course give KX slate and other potassium binders by the time you get hyperkalemia, but if you're a person that your, knew your kidneys were dying and you were at the point where you're gonna have a fatal hyperkalemia, you would probably take this as a message that it's time to go on dialysis. Now, dialysis is no fun. You have infections from the vascular access. You have infections if it's peritoneal dialysis. Uh, the most common cause of death on people on dialysis is not infection. It's actually accelerated atherosclerosis. It actually ages your coronaries. People who are on dialysis for a long time, if you're on dialysis and you're 50 and you've been on dialysis for 10 years, a 50-year-old will have the coronaries of a 70-year-old. It ages them because uh, the, ly the lymphocytes and the neutrophils and the other parts of your immune system that keep your coronaries clean don't work well. And basically, it ages your coronaries. If you're a diabetic on dialysis, wow, you have like a 20 or 30% five-year survival. So the most important thing for you to do if you know that you have dialysis is to go to your family reunions and hope that you're a Mormon and hope that you've got 87 aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and cousins because if you have a live related donor, you have like a 95% chance, 98% chance that that graft, that uh, donated kidney is gonna be alive in a year or two years. But if you have a dead unrelated donor, a cadaver donor, it's a little less, 90% you lose people. But let's say that you're just a person who's maintained on dialysis or a diabetic maintained on dialysis. That survival is 20%, 30%, 40%, depending on whether or not you have diabetes. Because just being maintained on dialysis doesn't do well after a long term because your coronaries wear out the wear and tear of our abuses. What is the indication for dialysis? You can't filter your potassium. You can't filter your acid. Your nitrogenous waste products build up and you're confused and have pericarditis. You have fluid overload. Why not just use a diuretic? Very simple. Because the fluid overload happened because your kidneys were too dead to excrete the fluid. So if you could just give diuretics and solve the problem, you would have a live kidney that you could just give a diuretic. The kidney is dead, so that's not gonna work too well. You don't have to dialyze people for high magnesium. Kidneys filter magnesium, and the magnesium accumulates so you avoid magnesium. And in uremia, do you bleed or you clot? Uremia makes you bleed because platelets don't work. Uremia makes you bleed because platelets don't work. And if you're acutely bleeding, what do we give you for that uremic-induced platelets? Desmopressin, DDAVP. Give those platelets a kick in the ass, squeeze out some extra von Willebrand's factor, and it makes them better. Give them some extra desmopressin and you treat them like von Willebrand's disease. So you bleed because platelets don't work. You have a low calcium because you don't make vitamin D. You have hyperparathyroidism melting your bones. You bind the phosphate with lanthanum, cevelomer, calcium acetate, calcium carbonate. 
These are the indications for dialysis. You also get an endocrinopathy that screws up. Most people don't know that practically everybody on dialysis has an erectile dysfunction that's hard to overcome without dialysis. Make good relationships with your family. You need those kidney. Hi, did you get my Christmas card or I miss you so much? You don't know what your HLA type is, do you? Peace.